So just in case you didn't know, this week's AEW was taped all the way back on last Thursday. And the fake crowd noise they put on top of this week's show, it wasn't distracting at all. LOL JK Bazinga, AEW, what the hell are you doing man? You had real human beings I do believe inside Daly's Place once again for this week's show AEW. So why pipe in fake stuff on top of people who proved with Sting's debut last week that they are really loud indeed? What the hell are you doing man? But I reckon this week's show was absolutely mental. No, not in terms of it being the absolute best professional wrestling show we've ever seen, ever, in the history of the world. Just because the stuff we saw, if you wrote it down on a sheet of paper before last night's show took place, somebody would call you crazy for even suggesting the things that happened on last night's show could even happen in AEW. But the editing, the fake crowd noise, it ruined large parts of the nights for me. So AEW, sort it out, man, will you? Yes. And before we get going, I will not have a bad word said about Nero's jumper. Stop it now. I am Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are all the AEWTF moments from last night's Dynamite. Intro man, do the honours, please. And we're kicking things off with Dasha Gonzalez in to the Young Bucks just before last night's AEW went on the air. Young Bucks, it would appear that Kenny Omega had broken his gentleman's agreement with John Moxley on last week's show. And I'm only saying this because to me, a useless hack on the interweb, when I hear somebody say it would appear, it would appear, it would appear, it would appear that they are using some inference in that situation there. While I'm sat there thinking to myself, Dasha, that microphone, boom, twatting off the head of one on John Moxley, that was pretty conclusive, was it not? He definitely did do it, that damn rap scallion. And then we heard Excalibur plugging AEW's lead sponsor, their favourite brand, or something like that, State Farm. And he said the following quote, Like a good neighbour, State Farm is always there. And like a good brother, Matt Jackson with the dive and drop kick. And I was thinking to myself, I can't remember seeing Luke Gallows or Carl Anderson doing that manoeuvre there, Excalibur. And yes, as I said at the top of the video, this week's AEW Dynamite was really heavily edited. That much we know. But we also learned during the course of last night's show that big dick Tony Schiavone, he can teleport. It wasn't just some dodgy editing. No, it was not. Stop it now. One second, Tony's in the ring. Then we see a couple of seconds of Curdy Rhodes' lovely head. And then big dick Tony Schiavone, he's all the way over there. And I reckon he uses his big dick like a pendulum. You see, he'll spread his legs. He'll start swinging. The big dick will swing between his legs. He'll let go of the big dick and it'll carry him away just like that so he can cover large distances in a very quick time indeed big dick tony Schiavone. that's what he did there and then this was the moment right here when i realized that sting is going to be doing the wrestling once again no I mean, I guess we must have already known this was coming, given that Sting is on the official AEW roster page as a win-loss thing next to his name. But bloody hell, that segment last night, it confirmed in my mind that Cody Rhodes versus Sting is going to be a matchup we're seeing in AEW. Cody must be wanking himself silly. Oh dear. He was roughing up Cody Rhodes with Sting. Sting basically said to Cody Rhodes, I couldn't give a toss about you, pal. I've come back for my own selfish reasons. And then he said, see you around, kid. And oh my God, I... I am worried. Is Taz's son Johnny Knoxville? Answers on a postcard, please. And then Dustin Rhodes won a match with a running bulldog. And I'm not sure if this is an actual WTF moment because we all know that Dustin Rhodes has one heck of a running bulldog. But when I saw him winning a match with that running bulldog right there, I was like, WTF? I don't know about you at home. So that's how we find ourselves here. When has he ever won a match with one of those? That's what I'm asking. And evil Uno, you might be the same human being as the one stood right here in front of that camera there, but I've got to question your method. Son. You're stood there trying to butter Dustin Rhodes' taint by saying, Dustin, you're only the third most important Rhodes in all of AEW. Why don't you take your rightful place inside the Dark Order where you can be number seven? And I was doing the mathematics in my head and I worked out that seven is quite literally more than double worse than three. 
And of course I get it because by insinuating that Dustin Rhodes could be number seven once again, Eva Luno was harking back to the days of WCW, where of course Dustin Rhodes was playing a character called Seven, who was Uncle Fester. But if Uncle Fester was a nonce and looked in kids' bedrooms at night while they were in bed, don't believe me? Go back and watch the promos. That was the character in a nutshell. He was a nonce, Uncle Fester. <laughs> wrestling there. Eh? And I am very confused. I know the shock and horror of it all, but is Brandy Rhodes a heel or a babyface? I cannot work it out. Because at the start of that segment there, we hear Big Dick Tony Schiavone saying, here we are joined by Chief Brandy Officer. It's Brandy Rhodes. And then Big Dick Tony Schiavone lists off all of Shaq's accomplishments and the titles he has in many companies around the world today and that pisses Brandy off. Why have you buttered his toast more than mine? You reel off all of his accomplishments yet you just say, Chief Brandy officer for me, Tony. Why was she pissed off? It's Shaq. Even I know who Shaq is, and I don't follow basketball at all. That's how big a name he is. He transcends all of the things. Of course Shaq's gonna have more butter on his toast than you do, Brandy. And then we heard Shaq saying to Brandy Rhodes, hey Brandy, while you've got your arm in a cast, you could sit back and take some pointers from Jade and learn a thing or two about the professional wrestling. And then Brandy turned around and said, is that a joke? And I was thinking, Brandy, you cannot be seen Serious there, pal. You can't be saying, is that a joke? You're Brandy Rhodes, man. Yes, I do know there's been massive improvement in Brandy Rhodes' wrestling over the last little while. But still, Brandy Rhodes is not Io Shirai or Sasha Banks, is she? She's Brandy Rhodes. You're nowhere near the top of the AEW women's roster, man, Brandy Rhodes. Of course you could take some pointers from anybody wrestling in AEW today. And I know this has been confirmed on so many occasions during AEW short history over the last year and a bit, but I was so worried worried before the company got going that Brandy would become just another Stephanie McMahon and promos like that confirm that she is just a knockoff of Stephanie McMahon and that's not it chief man just do something different do the opposite of Stephanie McMahon painful viewing that segment was last night Brandy confuses me we see her tackling Jade a couple of weeks ago fully baby face arm broken sympathetic baby face rocks up there last night delusional heel can't work it out man and just in case you are wondering where Santa Tana was on last night's show, apparently according to the Wrestling News, which means it's absolutely 100% factually correct. As always, we love the news here at Cultaholic Wrestling. Apparently he's dealing with some personal issues, that's a direct quote used in the news. So of course I'm sending all of my well wishes to Santana and his family at this time. I hope you're alright, pal. He's not my pal. He's got no idea who I am. I hope he's all right, though. And then we saw Kendo stick twat straight to the head. And it's a very good job that Abaddon is already dead. So there we see Kenny Omega getting out of the front seat inside of that there helicopter. And a mere second or two later, we see Don Callis getting out the same seat in that same helicopter. I'm not saying they followed Kenny Omega walking so they could leave the helicopter, not in sight of the camera, so Don Callis could run in off camera, sit in the front seat, they turn back around and then pretend Don Callis got out of the same helicopter, but it would appear that's exactly what they did. Weirdly cut together segment this, one of many during last night's show, but all I know is that Kenny Omega needs a bigger helicopter so he can take all his friends for a ride, man. Get a bigger one, Kenny. Oh my God, he's in the heel tunnel. And I was thinking, hang on a second there, big dick Tony Schiavone. You were on last night's Dynamite saying I've been in the professional wrestling business since all the way back in 1983. But seeing Kenny Omega twat John Moxley upside the head with a microphone given to him by Don Callis, that's the most disgusted I've ever been in my illustrious history here in the professional wrestling business. I was thinking, surely not, big dick Tony Schiavone. You lived through WCW. You're a massive liar. No one kicks out of the one-winged angel, he said. And I was thinking about Kota Ibushi just entering the room, sweeping the floors with a broom of death. And after seeing that graphic there on the screen during last night's Dynamite, I got very excited indeed. So excited, I ran down the stairs, I headed next door to the next door office, I stood at the window, I twatted the window, and I shouted, Sam, Sam, can you believe that Snoop Dogg's going to be on AEW? And Sam told me if Snoop Doggy Dog himself is going to be on commentary for AEW on that show right there, Sam will eat a second hat. 
They can't do it, can they? They might do it, though. But they can't do it, can they? They can't have seen Snoop Doggy Dog commentating Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. and thought, hey, that's a good idea. That's something we can put on our show, presumably on a live TV show. And if it happens, it's got to be a bit too dangerous to even take the chance on. Surely. But hey, I want to see it. Snoop Doggy Dog on AEW commentary. A hope and dream, I'm sure, will never actually become true. Because in that sort of situation, you've got to be more safe than being sorry later on. But that's it for the WTF moments from last night's AEW Dynamite. As I said, a crazy show with crazy things happening, but also a show blighted by some dodgy editing that really distracted you from the crazy things that were happening in front of your eyes. Sort it out before next week, AEW, you bastards. But I've been Ross Twiddell from Coldaholic Wrestling. Thank you for watching this rambling nonsense once again, and I'll see you very soon indeed.